Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise for Allah, Lord of the worlds, and peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, his companions, and all those who strive to follow in their footsteps. Welcome to another episode of Quran and Science. My name is Sharif Atuni, and in this uh, edition, we'll be speaking about uh, the, the the huge, uh, massive power uh, of of pillars, the unseen pillars that is carrying the sky. So, for this, we have with us Professor of Geology, uh, Professor Zalur Nagar. Thank you very much for joining here. Okay, uh, and also I'd like to introduce to you my uh, dear uh, guests, uh, Abdurrahman Ismail and Muhammad Saif. Assalamu alaikum. So at the beginning, before we start the edition and before we go to further explanation uh, about the the unseen power and force uh, carrying the sky, uh, we'll leave you with this uh, verse from the Holy Quran and we'll return back, so stay tuned. الله الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمد ترونها ثم استوى على العرش وسخر الشمس والقمر كل يجري لأجل مسمى يدبر الأمر يفصل الآيات لعلكم بلقاء ربكم توقنون It is God who has raised the heavens without visible pillars then firmly established himself on the throne He subjected the sun and the moon each pursuing its course for a fixed term he manages all affairs. He explains the revelations so that you may firmly believe in the meeting with your Lord. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science. And I'd like to first to start with uh, Muhammad Saif. Uh, I'd like to know what, what, uh, what is the meaning that uh, you've got uh, from uh, this ayah. To me, this ayah shows the greatness of Allah's uh, creativity, how He can create. He creates without the pillars, and we all know that we need pillars for everything. Yes. But He does it, and He creates out of nothing, whereas we create with something. And this ayah shows how strategically He has planned the orbits. He has planned them. And these orbits are so important for us because we know we get winter and summer whenever you go further from the sun just because the orbit is oval and we get uh, a summer when we come closer to the sun so these these are just signs that if allah if the, anything would happen and the sun and the earth would be very closer we would burn we would fry yes. and so it's allah allah explains how greatness is crea he, he is as a creator that we are not uh, facing our doom and he wants us to reflect on this i think so. okay uh, what about you, Abdul Rahman? Uh, do, do you think there is? Uh, have you thought of the scientific aspect of uh, this ayah? It's a very uh, d d difficult. Uh, uh, actually, it raises a lot of questions in my yes. mind, but uh, I can't think of it uh, lingu uh, linguistically. <laughs> no more, yes. no more than that. The scientific part is difficult for me to get. And uh, what is what is the part that you're getting? Uh, the part um, that I'm getting is that it makes me wonder how how Allah has created this neat sky. I mean, but uh, the the word uh, that has no gaps in it makes me feel okay. Wh what gaps can sky have? Yes. What kind of gaps? Mm -hmm. This is the question. That, comes that could be mind. a very question. A good, good question for Professor Zalul mm -hmm. Nagar. Um, uh, Professor Zalul Nagar, we uh, we'd like to know your uh, interpretation for this. Uh, I begin in the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of this universe and of everything that's in it. And I greet you all and our audience in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this verse uh, points to a very important uh, fact, um, which uh, explains how the universe is built. Um, of course, these billions and billions and billions of heavenly bodies uh, must have certain powers that can keep it in position that can allow it to rotate in its certain orbits 
uh, that uh, keeps it from falling or crashing with each other. Otherwise, this universe would, would be finished, would be destroyed, yes. you see. And that's why Allah says, Allah الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمد ترونها. He's addressing the people uh, that Allah has raised these firmaments without pillars that you, that you can see. Uh, and commentators on this verse uh, said that uh, are there unseen pillars or there are no pillars? Actually, he has raised the firmaments without pillars that you can see. Yes. And so they, uh, they, uh, they ask this question. Are there really pillars that cannot be seen? Or is it an unseen or, pillar? Or, unseen, or, or no pillars at or all. no pillars at all. No pillars yes. at all, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the recent... Uh, discourses in the area of astronomy and physical astronomy claim that there are four main powers that hold things in that universe intact. Uh, the first is the strong nuclear power which holds the elementary particles within the nucleus of, of every atom, the weak nuclear power which holds the electrons to the nucleus, and that's why you get uh, radioactive elements that can lose part of their energy quite easily and um, you have the electromagnetic waves uh, that like the rays that come from the sun and we have the gravitational powers and so much so that science are trying today to quantify this gravitation power they say that there is a unit unity or a unit called graviton and these graviton units are the actual powers that are holding these uh, huge heavenly bodies in position. So actually there is a power or more than one power that can hold this universe together and actually scientists are trying now to combine these four forces into one force uh, called the unified uh, force or unified theory. So there is a power that's holding everything in that universe intact and keeping everything in its position and allowing everything to rotate uh, in its own particular orbit and if this this power would would fail the universe would, would collapse it will be yes. the end of it you see of course um this this is uh, like in, in in the verse it's very important the uh, word tarawna no. it means that this is something that you're seeing maybe every day and that you have to be reminded of the force and the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes and at the same time it may reflect on the fact that these powers cannot be seen mm -hmm. uh, Yes. And these are, are held together by forces that you humans cannot see. Yes. And that's true. We cannot see it. We can detect it, but we, but we cannot see it. Yes. So it, it is preventing, uh, yeah, to, to make it basic and, and simple for uh, the viewers, uh, this, this uh, unseen power uh, or, uh, is, is, is actually carrying the sky and carrying, uh, and uh, alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's, it's something that's preventing lo lo a lot of bad things to, to happen to earth. Definitely. Does this mean that there is nothing that could be approaching earth uh, from this uh, significant uh, force? No, we, we can receive some meteors and meteorites uh, as a result of dying heavenly bodies that uh, can fall on the earth or can fall on any other uh, body in the universe. Uh, we can get, uh, the uh, Earth receives annually uh, several thousands of tons of uh, iron meteorites, uh, stony meteorites, uh, iron stony meteorites. But uh, this does not mean that you will get a whole body colliding with the Earth. Yes. As many people would imagine, uh, a comet would hit the Earth and it would destroy everything. No. Yani, as so believers, these, these scientific fictions are not, are not really uh, true? Well, they are not purely uh, fictitious, you see. Mm -hmm. Um, if you don't believe in, in the greatness of your creator, if mm -hmm. you don't believe that you are uh, really within the mercy of that creator, and this great creator is taking care of everything in that universe, mm -hmm. then any event in the earth would, would create havoc, actually. Of course. Would make people worried and panicking and, uh, and uh, expecting uh, any dangers at any moment, you see. But uh, once you trust in your creator, you have to trust that he will keep that universe intact until the last hour. And when yes. the last hour will come, everything will collapse. Okay. We hope not. No. Um, to, speaking about the graviton or the, uh, the, the ways that the scientists are now measuring the force or the power yes. Uh, yes. Uh, or the unseen pillars of, of the sky, um, 
Is 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 there something that is measurable now that they can measure this? Oh power? yes, uh, these uh, nuclear powers are measurable. The strong nuclear power is measurable. The weak nuclear uh, power uh, of our force is measurable. The electromagnetic waves are measurable. Even the gravity is measurable. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in in what form? Yes, in, in, we don't know. The graviton we, is. We uh, cannot quantify the. Uh, the uh, you cannot specify it. Specify. You can quantify okay. it. But you cannot, cannot specify it. Yes. Okay. Yes. And and uh, do so scientists now are using or are thinking of ways to maybe use a similar uh, uh, methodology of having these powers for maybe producing energy on Earth? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, there are um, many ways uh, in which science are trying to simulate what's going on in the universe. Uh, one of these uh, basic ways is trying to get nuclear fusion which is happening within the stars but at lower temperatures and they have not succeeded so far but they, but they are still trying because if you can get energy from nuclear fusion you ha can solve many problems of the universe yes which yes. is a very important yes. uh, item okay uh, we'll move now for a very short break and we'll return back for more explanations and more questions from my dear guests so uh, stay tuned with us <laughs> Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Most High spoke the Quran. It's the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we given the rights of the Quran? Are you ready to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment for the Quran to take us from our hands to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we go through every verse in the Quran to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Watch Huda TV. Quran in depth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science. And now uh, we leave the floor to Muhammad Saif. He has a couple of questions to be asking to Dr. Zalul. Sir, I wanted to ask you, sir, is that uh, does the sun also have an orbit of its own? which it revolves or can you pass this okay the, the question is is uh, does the sun have uh, have an orbit for itself yes mm -hmm. yes every heavenly body has got an orbit there is no chaos in this universe yes. everything is fixed in its own orbit and is running at its own speed and um, everything in that universe is running and the one of the signs of the greatness of the creator is that everything is running but the relationships are fixed yes. so that it would appear to people as if nothing is running you see and actually the earth is in every second of its life in its different place in the universe every second we are in a different place in the universe so there's no case in, in, in the universe the only case comes from the human creation the human mind <laughs> because the galaxy is expanding and i think there are eyes of the Quran yes the universe is expanding mm. and the, these relationships can always be kept constantly yeah. and this is again amazing you get a continuously running universe at different speeds and uh, each uh, heavenly body has got actually more than one movement yet no collapse no crashing uh, no coll collision with each other and the fixed the relation relationship are kept constant so that you don't feel that you are uh, you have moved you see but actually you have moved okay, okay uh, dr zalulu before moving to uh, abdurrahman's uh, question i need to know more about the, the second part of the verse which uh, is about summa stawa ala al-arsh wa sakhara shams wal qamar summa stawa ala al-arsh then allah has established himself on the throne on a way which we cannot describe a way that relates to his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala um, because the human brain cannot perceive the identity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, but and that's why anything in the Quran that relates to Allah we, we leave it without uh, really commenting on it we accept it as is and inshallah on the day of judgment we can understand it uh, because Allah is above the human intellect to perceive or to understand um, and he has established for both the sun and the moon their courses wherein they cannot uh, get out of it you see because if 
the sun was drifted away from us a little bit would freeze if, if it came slightly closer to us would burn so to keep things in order Allah has established the orbits for every uh, universal body and every universal body like the sun or the moon or the earth cannot get out of its established orbit and that's why he said he has established the sun and the moon to play their role in making life on the surface of that planet feasible and happy and if they get out of that orbit everything can be destroyed Okay, and, and the last part of the verse, which is الأجل المسمى يدبر الأمر يفضل الآيات لعلكم بلقاء ربكم تقولون. نعم. The entire the entire verse uh, uh, means that if you look into these matters, you can realize that all the unseen knowledge in that book is correct. If Allah says that there is an end for life on that on that planet, and everybody will go back to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and there will be a day of resurrection, a day of uh, a gathering uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accountability, judgment, eternity in life to come, either in paradise forever or in hell forever. We have to say, I mean. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zaghloul, at the beginning, the very first episode we had, uh, the Quran and science, we discussed about uh, the, the guidance uh, and and how, we, how 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 well you can find boundaries of thinking for scientific uh, scientific uh, thinking, and we also see we also saw in previous editions about the relation between the day of resurrection and the verses that gives scientific notations. Yes. So is there a direct relation in every uh, verse that gives scientific notations to the day of resurrection? Yes. 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 You see the fact that uh, look for example at the sun. It has been established that the sun is losing every second in the form of energy, a mass equal to 4.6 million tons. And if you see this going on in the sun every second, 4.6 million tons are lo wasted, are lost. This means that this sun is not eternal. It has to come to an end. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you see, if you see, for example, the moon is drifting towards the sun at the rate of three to four centimeters per year, this means that a moment will come when the sun will swallow the moon. Yes. And if the sun swal swallows the moon, this will be the beginning of the collapse of the universe. Mm -hmm. see, and so on. So yes. there are re direct relationships between okay. scientific notions of the Quran and many, many signs of the last hour. Yes. Okay. That's beautiful. Let's move uh, to Abdurrahman's uh, questions. Um, if uh, the sun consists, or if the stars in general consist of gases like helium, when they die, they turn into a dense mass. Right or wrong? If they t uh, turn into a dense mass, how come? Th uh, how was that mass formed? I mean, they were gas in the beginning. How did they turn into a mass of uh, dense material? Again, materials? you see a sign of the unity of the Creator, Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah mm -hmm. is showing us that out of hydrogen, the lightest known element and the mm -hmm. simplest known element, Allah is creating more than hundred and five known elements to us, more than one hundred elements. The origin of, of them all is hydrogen, pointing to the unity of the Creator, you see. And I, and I always remind the, uh, uh, my students and friends like yours that the fact that the whole universe is built on one norm, on one law, the structure of the atom is similar to the structure of the living cell, the structure of the uh, solar system, the structure of the galaxy, the structure of anything you, you go from the simpler to the greater you find unity in the construction of the universe and this unity points to the unity of the creator allah is creating everything out of hydrogen it points to the unity of the creator and so on um i have a question that might be irrelevant to the topic of this verse yes uh, if i'm to argue with someone and i want to use science as a proof uh, a proof of uh, the truth, uh, truthfulness of Quran. Yes. Um, uh, what kind of science or what kind of, uh, how can I make a difference between what is theory and what is fact? I mean, uh, maybe I can read, but how about people, uh, the normal viewers? How can That's they... why I say one of the controls of our dealing with this topic, uh, Quran and science or scientific uh, in imitability of the Quran. Uh, I have to differentiate between the one who verifies the verse, 
scientifically, who is a specialist in the field, and who is an authority, and I can take his word uh, for its value, and someone who is quoting him. I have to do a differentiate between the two. Yes. If, uh, for example, a chemist has verified a certain chemical statement in the Quran, I have to quote him. I don't say that I, I know this fact. No. I have to quote him. And we have to differentiate between whoever has verified a Quranic statement who should be a specialist in the field, well known for his eminence in that field, and the people who quote him or repeat his words, you see. Okay. Okay, any, any further questions from uh, Mohammed or uh, Abdurrahman? Okay, okay. okay uh, moving back to, to the verse itself and, and, and the point that we have mentioned before uh, the last break about the energy uh, uh, and, and that the scientists are now trying to find a form of uh, maybe implementing the same uh, uh, way to have an energy that's benefiting uh, human. So is this something that the, the, the scientists are moving or are now on track that yes, you believe that yes. they would get, they're getting some, some yes, results out of it? Definitely. Science is advancing at a fantastic rate these days. But sadly enough, the um, deprivation of the scientific activity from moral commitment has led to lots of uh, miseries and lots of disadvantages, you see. If a scientist is morally committed, he will never involve himself in something that would harm humanity. But, um, for example, you see, we know that we are looking for uh, solar energy. We are looking for wind energy. We are looking for water energy. We are looking for geothermal energy, uh, which is a cheap, clean, uh, renewable energy that does not harm anybody. Yes. We are looking for uh, uh, energy from, um, from um, the combination or uh, nuclear fusion of light elements into heavier elements. But, uh, of course, this is taking place at very high temperatures, and they are trying to try to find a way to get, get it done uh, at lower temperatures. If they su we succeed, this will be great. But we hear that always that there's a problem of this nuclear fusion of uh, people are thinking it of a friendly uh, way and others are thinking of uh, like uh, to be uh, used uh, at war. Uh, yeah, it could be destructive, you mm -hmm. see. But uh, I'm sure its advantages are, are, are enormous. Are enormous yes. uh, for example, you see, we now know that pollution is harming humanity. And we have many alternative solutions for uh, the pollutants. But the industrial countries refuse to commit themselves to any international agreement, you see. And because of this, we are destroying the, our environment with our own hands because there is no moral commitment. There is scientific advancement without moral commitment, without religious commitment, without fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Quran says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. Uh, pollution and uh, uh, destruction and uh, every bad thing is appearing now in uh, both on land and in the sea. And you say land and sea, it includes the uh, atmosphere on top of the land and on the sea, polluting every environment. And Allah يعني, is leaving people to their own mistakes as a form of punishment. Uh, you see, let, 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 probably they will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. But we are suffering from uh, the fantastic scientific development without moral commitment and without religious commitment. Okay, uh, before we end this uh, episode, we would like to, uh, to have from you the, the, the last one statement message uh, from this verse to our viewers. You see, this message comes to, towards the end. Say, لَعَلَّهُمْ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّهِمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّكُمْ تُوْقِنُونَ So that you people may believe that the day will come when you go back to your Lord for judgment and for reward or punishment. If uh, any human being keeps this in mind, he can never go, go, go wrong, you see. Yes. Uh, so Allah is telling us, look into yourselves, look into the universe around yourselves so that you can uh, be assured that time will come when you go back to your Creator, when He will hold you accountable for everything you did in this, this life, in your life on earth. Every word you uttered, every penny you earned, every action you took, you see. And if one keeps this in mind, I assure you that he will behave properly and will never go in a, in a, in a wrong way.
Okay. Uh, Professor Zaghloun Nagar, thank you very much and it's a pleasure to have you here with us at Fula TV. Okay, my dear guests, uh, Abdul Rahman and Mohammed Saif, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And with this, my dear viewers, uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, uh, see you in the coming uh, edition. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.